Here I've been asked to answer the question, when you're pruning a bonsai, how do you decide which branches to keep and which branches to prune? Well, for me, there really are two considerations to keep in mind. So first and foremost here, I want to say congratulations to Bonsai Empire on 20 years. That's a huge milestone and I think you guys have done a great thing for the Bonsai community over the past 20 years and I really hope going forward for the next 20 years you have the same sort of success into the future. Now specifically for this video here, I've been asked to answer the question, when you're pruning a Bonsai, how do you decide which branches to keep and which branches to prune? Well, for me, there really are two considerations to keep in mind. On one side of the spectrum, you have the horticultural aspects, and on the other side of the spectrum, we have the aesthetic and design aspects of bonsai art. So let's look at the horticultural aspects to start with here. Now, one of the first questions I'm gonna ask myself in deciding what branches to prune and which ones to keep is, how much of the foliage or how much of the branching on a specific plant can I cut off at any one time? And that's gonna be dictated by the species that I'm working with. So for example, if I'm working on a juniper, and more specifically, if I'm working with a tree like this, which is a Rocky Mountain juniper, I know that if I take off a tremendous amount of foliage and a tremendous amount of branching all at once, that's going to cause the tree to revert to juvenile foliage, which means that the adult or scale-like, very tight foliage will actually elongate and become very spiky if I cut too much off. Same thing is true for plants like Itoigawa Shimpaku from Japan. Now, if I'm working with most deciduous material like Japanese maples, for example, or trident maples, I know that I can take off a lot of branching, particularly on younger trees, and those trees will flush out with a tremendous amount of secondary growth. So you're gonna have to assess each plant that you're working with and make a decision from there. Now the second consideration here in our horticultural section would be the timing or what time of year are we actually pruning the trees. So again, that's gonna be dictated by the species. So if you're working with junipers, for example, pruning those, working on those really just about any time of year is absolutely fine. When you're working on deciduous material, on the other hand, for example, you're gonna to wanna to avoid making large cuts in the spring as a lot of water is being absorbed up into the tree because you could cause excess bleeding and potential dieback on those plants at that time of year. With maples, for example, you're gonna to wanna to wait until that first flush comes out, completely hardens off, and then do your major cuts. Or you can do a secondary kind of silhouette refinement in the winter. But you know, making sure that you're doing it at the right time is paramount to the health of the tree. And the next horticultural consideration that I would keep in mind is whether the species that I'm working with is apically dominant or laterally dominant. Meaning, is the apex the strongest portion of the tree and does it grow upward towards the light or are the lower branches more dominant growing outward in a lateral direction? This is going to dictate how I prune the trees. So for example, if we're working on a tree like a Japanese maple that is apically dominant, so the apex is very strong, I'm going to want to make sure to prune back the apex more than I prune back the lower branches on the tree. This will help balance energy across the plant. Same thing is true for junipers, pines, and actually a majority of the species that we work with in bonsai are going to be apically dominant. On the flip side, with our laterally dominant plants, like shrubs, for example, so you know boxwood or azaleas, the lower branches are going to be stronger than the apex, so we're gonna to have to prune them differently. We'll prune the lower branches a bit more heavily than we prune the apexes on those trees to balance out the energy there. Now, regardless of whether or not the tree is apically dominant or laterally dominant, we are trying to promote outward lateral kind of downward undulating growth on our bonsai. This is what gives us that aged appearance to the tree. So as I'm pruning back, say, secondary branches on any plant, whether it's a shrub or a tree, I'm looking to remove heavy upward growth. I'm looking to remove growth that is dangling off the bottom of the branches and promote outward lateral growth to get that undulating effect. Again, this gives us an older appearance to the tree, a weightier appearance to the tree, and this is what makes a bonsai a bonsai design-wise. Okay, so here's a good example of what I'm talking about here. You can see on this juniper that we've got a shoot that's growing straight up towards the light. Well, we wanna be promoting this downward lateral growth right here. This is softer growth, and again, we're trying to drop branches down to create that lateral look, which makes them look older. So I actually wanna cut this branch back right here in favor of this lateral growth. If we were to leave this on the tree, this would continue to get stronger, these would get weaker, potentially die off, and then you're left with this weird shaped branch. So to offset this or to hedge against this, we're just gonna come in here and remove this upward shoot. 
that will redirect energy to these lower branches and we can continue that lateral undulating branch structure on the tree. So here's an example of a deciduous tree with a heavy upward growing branch. Again, if we were to leave this, these guys could potentially become weak over time and die off. Now, in the case of this specific tree right here though, I'm actually going to leave this upward growing shoot for a little while here. And the reason I'm doing that is to try to thicken this branch right here. This is our directional branch on the tree. So I want it to be thicker relative to the other branches further up on the plant. So allowing this to grow up towards the light out here at the very end, draw energy through the branch will help thicken that. But I have to be careful not to let this go too long because again, these could weaken over time. So it's a matter of balancing energy within the branch, thickening it to the degree that I want without allowing this stuff to die. So you just have to keep an eye on your trees and assess how those lateral branches are growing relative to the strong upward growth. And that'll give you an indication as to when to come through and cut this off. Okay, so what about the aesthetic and design aspect of bonsai? How does that influence how I decide what to prune and what to keep on my trees? Well, first and foremost, every bonsai that you're going to be working with is going to have directionality. It's either going to move to the left or move to the right. And one of the things that's going to dictate that movement is the first directional branch or sashieda in Japanese. Now, this branch tends to be the longest branch on your tree. It tends to also be the lowest branch on your tree. So when I'm designing a tree and choosing branches to prune off or to keep, I'm looking for that first directional branch or a branch that I can use as a directional branch, whether that be something on the left side or the right side of the tree, or perhaps even something on the back side of the plant that I'm going to wire down and pull around so it's visible from the front. The second consideration here would be asymmetry. So of course, with directionality, if your tree is symmetrical, it's going to be hard to tell if it's moving to the left or moving to the right. So having that directional branch on one side be longer than the secondary branches on the other side of the tree is going to show off that directionality and make your eye move in a specific direction or the intended direction as you're building a plant. The next consideration would of course be depth. So we don't want our trees to be two dimensional, they need to be three dimensional. So we need to have branches on the rear of the tree as well. So as I'm pruning, I'm making sure to leave some branches on the backside that are going to give us that visual depth. And then the overall shape of the tree, as you guys probably are aware, should fit somewhere into kind of a scaling triangle shape. That doesn't mean that every branch has to be exactly within that triangle, but an overall sort of scaling triangle shape is going to give you that asymmetry and that directionality to the plant and be an overall good guideline to follow as you're selecting branches to prune. As I said though, you know, some of those branches may stick out beyond the edge of that scaling triangle and that may give you a more interesting and natural look to the plant, but overall you should be able to lay that scaling triangle shape over your bonsai to provide you that asymmetry and directional guideline. Okay, so I hope that answers your questions to some degree about what branches to keep, what branches to prune when you're deciding how to build and create your bonsai. Once again, congratulations to Bonsai Empire and here's to another 20 years going into the future.